In this video, you will learn Azure Load Balancer. Azure Load Balancer delivers high availability and network performance to your applications. It is a layer 4 TCP UDP load balancer that distributes incoming traffic among healthy instances of services defined in a load balanced set. As of now, Azure Load Balancer supports two different types, basic and standard. Although basic load balancer is generally available, a standard load balancer is currently in public preview. So in this video, you will learn load balance incoming internet traffic to different virtual machines. So we will set up two virtual machines in a load balanced set and you will see how incoming traffic is being distributed among the machines. So let's get started. I'm going to create a resource group and I'll name it demo2 and I'll create. So resource group is created. I'll go inside that resource group and I'll add my first machine. So I will search here virtual machine and then select Windows Server 2016 data center and create it. Now in the basic setting here I'll type my virtual machine name as VM1 and I'll use my name as username and password. Now I'll select my resource group here demo2 and then I'll hit OK. Now on virtual machine size selection I'll click on view all and then I'll select the first one and then hit select. If you create virtual machine it won't have availability set by default. So I need to select it here. I'll hit create new I'll use availability set as its name and OK then virtual network name so you see it is automatically picking a name demo to vnet but I don't want this one because I'll use this virtual network and availability set in other machines also so I'll keep a generic name here So I'll use just VNet. You see here a VNet in demo one resource. This is another resource group. So I don't want to select this. I'll create a brand new because this is a separate demo. And now you see subnet is default. IP address is default. And then here auto shutdown is by default on. I'll set it off. And I'll select diagnostic storage account. And then OK. Now it is running a final validation. And now I can click on create. So now this is submitting the deployment and it will create virtual machine for me. Now let's go ahead in the same resource group and I'll create another virtual machine but wait for a moment I should see here availability set and vnet at least so that I can reuse that availability set and vnet in another machines. So I have vnet and availability set now. I'll click on add again and I'll click here windows server 2016 data center. I don't need to type it always. I'll create it. Now here I'll use VM2 and then I'll use same username and password again. I'll select resource group demo2 and I'll hit OK. Now here I'll click on view all. I may select different machine size and configuration but I'll select the same and now here because I already have availability set I'll select that availability set here you see here availability set and then I'll select the VNet and you can see I submitted request for VM2 also 
and both VM deployment is still in progress. Once the deployment will success, I'll open the RDP for both virtual machines and then I'll install web server IIS. And now you can see both virtual machines are successfully deployed. Now I'll open the RDP for both machines, VM1 and I'll hit on connect. It will download that and VM2 and connect. VM1 now you can see server manager on the virtual machine is opening now i'll click on add roles and features next next and here is web server iis check it and add features next 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 now let's go ahead on another machine i'll do the same here next 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 and install now while this is installing let's go ahead on the portal and allow port 80 on both machines network security group so you see vm1 nsg network security group i'll click here and then in inbound security rules i'll add port 80 and its name is port underscore 80 click on ok and do the same for vm2 nsg port 80 ok and now on both machines I'll allow port 80 on firewall in inbounds in inbound rules add new and then port next port number 80 next 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 and port 80 I'll use it as name as well finish and close it now same on another machine inbound rule new rule port next 80 next 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 80 as a name and finish now I allowed port 80 on dashboard and on both machines and the feature installation IIS is also successful I'll close it and let's check on another machine this is in progress and this is installed successfully and I'll close it I do one more thing I'll go on IIS root folder I'll edit this image and I'll write here VM1 I'll edit it and I'll use VM2 here save it close it now let's refresh this page 
you see this is vm2 now and if i refresh here you see vm1 here now so far we configured iis and everything and now we are able to access our website hosted on both virtual machines right let's imagine that you have a web application and and you would like to load balance the request on both machines and now in this demo we have that configuration we have application hosted on both machines and you can identify by this image that here is vm1 and vm2 now let's go ahead and add load balancer i'll click on add and i'll search here load balancer and then I select load balancer and create it now i need to give couple of information here load balancer and public ip i'll create a new public ip for this load balancer so keep in mind we have public ip for both virtual machines but load balancer always has uh, another ip address so any request will come to load balancer ip and then load balancer will run its own algorithm and send the request on both machines so i'll create it i'll use name load balancer ip and i use dynamic right so if you have some production case always use a static i'll use dynamic and okay and now here i'll use same resource group and i'll hit on create now load balancer deployment is in progress and it is successful now i'll refresh here and i will have load balancer here i'll click it and then in front end ip configuration i'll click load balancer front end and you see here load balancer ip unassigned i'll click here and i'll create a new ip the earlier ip which we created is not visible here so let's go ahead and delete that ip because it is not associated automatically with this load balancer so you see here it is not associated right so you see delete message here i'll safely delete it it cannot be deleted since still allocated to resource some resource so i'll come back here i'll i'll click on load balancer again and front end ip load balancer load balancer and and i'll create a brand new again and i'll hit save and it is successful now let's go ahead and give another chance to delete that ip load balancer ip and you see associate message here now so it was in progress somehow but it is not in use so you can't see ip and dns name here so i'll safely delete it now it will not throw any error now while this is deleting i'll again go on load balancer now let's go ahead and configure backend pools i'll click on add and then i'll type a name here backend pool and i'll select availability set because we added our both machines in availability set so i should be able to see that availability set name here you see availability set inside resource group demo 2 i'll select this one and then i'll add target network ip configuration for both machines i'll select here vm1 and then its ip waiting for virtual machine selection and ip config and add another vm2 and its ip config 
so you see here vm1 and we selected vm2 i'll select on ok now it is updating so we should be able to see both machines here in load balancer back and pulls and you can see both machines now so all i need is to wait a few moment and i'm able to see both machines here now go on health probes and i'll click on add and i'll name it health probe port 80 and i'll give everything default and it is updating and it is successful now go on load balancing rules load balancing rule and port 80 and i leave everything default and i'll hit on ok and this is successful now let me try if i able to see front end ip configuration and you can see ip address here now as soon as i configured backend pulls health probes and load balancing rules i'm able to see ip address here now let me close this and i'll refresh this and load balancer front end i'll copy the ip address and i'll hit that ip address now and you can see we are able to hit virtual machine one with load balancer ip address right so i'm hitting load balancer and load balancer automatically running some sort of algorithm and distributing request on machines randomly so if i refresh here i'm not able to see vm2 here the reason is that my vm1 is super healthy right so let's go ahead and stop the vm1 and then i'll come here and refresh it vm1 here and i'll hit on stop yes so i'm intentionally stopping this virtual machine but in real scenario load balancer will automatically distribute the traffic on all the machines inside so it is deallocating vm1 let's go ahead and refresh it now and okay so you can see we are now receiving response from virtual machine 2 because vm1 is somehow down or in maintenance so i hope you are able to understand the use of load balancer here thank you so much for watching